sometimes I'm afraid to set big goals, you know, or to say it out loud. Mm. Because fear, if you say fear it, of failure or fear of a success. That's so yes, a, fear of failure and question. fear of success. Welcome to the I Race Like a Girl podcast, where a professional triathlete and an age grouper talk all things sport and life. We are here to educate and enlighten, but most importantly, to keep it real. We are your hosts, Amy Woods and Angela Nate. Let's race to it. Hey, everyone. Before we get started, Angela and I wanted to let you know about a way you can support this podcast and have some fun doing it. We have created a 250 Miles in May challenge. During the month of May, ride 250 miles on your bike, indoor or outdoor, log your miles, and win prizes. It's that simple. With your registration, you get some great swag, two Ask the Coach Zoom calls with Angela and me, a live Zoom ride at the end of the month, and you'll be eligible for great prizes. And like I said, you get to support this podcast. Head to amywoodsfitness.com today to learn more. We hope you all join us and rack up some miles this May. On to the podcast. We are talking goal setting today, but we hear you. Smart goals are so 2020. So in this podcast, we are looking at new ways of thinking about goal setting, from short-term goals to medium-sized goals to long-term goals. We talk about fear of failure and fear of success, and how goals don't have to be performance-based. They can be about focus or nutrition or mindset, but most importantly, you have to be excited about any goal you set. And as you will hear Angela say in the podcast, challenge yourself to the possibility of what if. Lots of good tips and stories in this one. Have a listen. Welcome back, everybody, to the I Race Like a Girl podcast. It is Amy and Angela, and we are here today. I was thinking that we should start talking about setting some goals for our season. Mm -hmm. It is spring. Uh, I think most people have a sense of what their race calendar is shaking out to look like, maybe with some few races here and there. Um, to be determined. And it's kind of the time where people start to get a little antsy and start to Mm -hmm. focus in on, okay, what do I want to do this season? What do I want to accomplish? What do I want to do in my workout today? It's time to, you know, get a little more, I don't want to say serious. What's the word? Um, A little more focused. focused. Yeah. Focus. That's the word um, (laughs) on these and set some goals. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today and how goal setting can can help um, and how to do it and maybe with a few stories in between of uh, how it's worked for us. What do you think, Angela? Perfect. I got lots of stories. <laughs> <laughs> lots of stories. Well, so let's actually look at it from, I'm interested from a professional triathlete perspective in terms of um, do you goal set uh, and how and how do you go about that? How do you kind of look at that. Yeah. You know, when I first started the sport, I always was like, I want to get first in my age group and, and things that I didn't really have control over and working with my coach now and kind of just learning as I developed as an athlete. And I worked with a sports psychologist before, and, um, you kind of have to look at goals in three different ways. So there's objectives, which are things that you have 100% control over. So you're going to be strong. You're going to not give up no matter how things go. You're going to be focused on uh, a nutrition plan. So those are the, those are things you can, you have control over 100% of the time because a lot of it is based on the attitude um, and actual processing of, like, say, a nutrition plan. Targets are another way to look at goals, which are things that you have a little bit less control over but they're directly related to your training. So let's say you, you've you been training for a race and you know you consistently are seeing paces in your aerobic zone at eight minute miles. Um, that's kind of like with your coach, you can create these goals where you're, um, in the race you wanna average, I don't know, uh, it just depends which race you're doing, but let's say 7.45 pace. So mm-hmm. that is kind of a target for you specifically. It 
you have some control over that because you obviously looked at your history and your focus is on that on that number. But again, it's not 100% in your control. The other type of goal that a lot of people get stuck on in what I started with is the outcome goal. So I want to place first place. I want to get to Kona. I want to um, podium f- finish. These are things that are like completely out of your ability to know. Um, So my focus now, even as an athlete, is always the objectives and targets. So I really like to have um, kind of words in my head. And I know I've said this in many different podcasts, but I love the word be strong. And so that's my objective in almost every race. And that can, and that word to me means be strong mentally, be strong physically, physically go to the edge. Um, It's just kind of a cue for me. And if you can find cues for your objectives, it just comes a lot faster and easier in your mind. And then what I like to do also is having targets. So my coach helps me find targets. So if I use power on the bike, which I do, um, I'm coming up to a race here soon. So my target would be to average a certain amount of wattage on the bike. So it gives me something to focus on in the race. However, there's a huge caveat to that because sometimes you're not going to be able to hit that target and you don't want to derail your mental mindset. And so that's where the objectives come into play, where I really focus on words, positive affirmations. um, And then one of the biggest things that I love to do is not to think in my head. It's one of the best times I have ever raced is when I just let go of thought. So a lot of times... I know I'm saying a lot of stuff, but a lot of the times (laughs) there are some negative thoughts that come in all the time. And what I really like to do is not try to say, stop thinking this way or stop that. I just try to take a deep breath and exhale and just kind of let the thought process go. And so my, my whole mindset (laughs) is completely blank. And that's when I feel like I'm just like completely in the moment I can focus on an objective and see what comes. And so that's kind of how I, how I race now in, in everything. And a lot of my athletes come to me and they say, I want to, I want to run a 745. I want to run, um, you know, a half marathon in under two hours. And those are great targets, but we don't know where you are in your fitness. We don't know what's going to happen from here until, you know, three months down the road. And so I love to always bring back the mindset into the objectives. Um, I have one athlete, Jen Seen, and I'm sure she won't mind me saying her name, but her and I think so much alike that it's just, it's really fun to, to um, coach her because it really is just like, let's just see what I got. And she has it a hundred percent. And I didn't have to teach her that. I didn't have to show her that. And, and it, and she actually proved to me like that you don't have to learn this stuff, you know, it's like it's coming f- from within. You just have to be able to believe it. And, um, she's made, you know, strides and gains over the last couple of years without having to have, you know, outcome goals, which, which really can derail you. Um, a lot of the times. Yeah, I think, you know, I think one, a couple things you touched on, <laughs> a couple things you touched on that I think are important. First, if you do have a coach, though, and you do have some goals, you need to be honest with your coach about those goals, whether it is outcome based. Like, I mean, I think about it as like outcome, performance, and process, which is the exact same thing. But, um, you know, whether it is outcome based, because there are people out there who are like, well, I do want to get to Kona, or I do mm-hmm. want to crack this time in an Ironman, mm-hmm. and of course, or a half Ironman. And that also, that depends on the day. It depends on the course. It depends on so many mm-hmm. things. So if, you know, if you talk to your coach about, uh, or just yourself about, you know, well, these are some of my goals. And then you have to think about, um, you know, whether that is a realistic goal for you, you know, whether it's totally achievable. Like, for example, if you're saying, you know, well, I want to do an Ironman, but you barely have the time to train, you know, this many hours in a week, then that might be, you know, more of a long term goal. And you're so mm-hmm. when you're ready to hit that goal and you can talk to your coach about that or you're maybe your coach is like, well, we might be able to do that if 
we structure it this way. So sometimes your coach, just like, you know, you and Jen C and your coach is just as mm-hmm. a really, really good resource to help you figure out, you know, some of these goals. And even you were talking about mindset. Um, I think in every race I do, mindset is a goal. It's a, you know, it's an objective mm-hmm. and you have to um, set that and just say, no matter what happens, I'm going to stay positive. I'm going to get through whatever happens um, and just kind of go with the day. And sometimes you have to actually just write that down <laughs> if that's what you have mm-hmm. trouble with in a race. Um, I really liked what you t- spoke about, like a positive mindset. Uh, the one thing about that, though, is sometimes it's simply impossible to have a positive mindset. You know, <laughs> like when your legs are killing, um, you know, you have blisters on your feet, you, you're in pain. And that's kind of where I like to uh, practice going into that quiet place inside me because, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to be able to fight all these negative thought processes. And so, you know, I go into a race with the intention of having really good um, specific objectives, like being strong, being grateful and, and, and being engaged. But I think one of the things that happens if I become negative is I have to become aware of it first and yeah. then I just try to like let go. I don't try to to change that negative, but I try to let it go. And then I can focus back on to the objectives I have of being strong, being grateful, um, pushing myself to the limit. So I guess as a pro, because I'm an age grouper, when you, I let my negativity go on the run on the Ironman when everybody's like, how are you doing? And I'm shouting out, I'm never doing this again. That's just what I shout out on the run. And that helps me let it go. No, I'm just kidding. I just uh, laugh I, and smile. I do the same thing. I don't think it matters <laughs> if there, I mean, a hundred percent, it doesn't matter what you call yourself. Um, and you know, you could be racing in a, in the professional ranks or you could be racing in an age group rank. I mean, we're all human and we all have the same types of mindsets and goals and desires and, um, you know, we all fight, fight yeah. that stuff. And I think, you know, I was a classroom teacher for 22 years and we did a lot of goal setting. I did a lot of goal setting um, with my middle schoolers because mm. um, sometimes when you're going through the day to day and you're doing lessons and these kids are just going from class to class and, you know, why, why do I need to learn this and why am I doing this? And you ask them, well, well what's your goal? Like, what do you want to get out of this? And they're like... <laughs> I just want to get A's. <laughs> and you're just like, okay, <laughs> well, you know, let's think about, you know, let's set some intention. So it's kind of like, well, if you ask mm-hmm. an athlete, well, I just want to be a fast runner. Like my goal mm-hmm. is to be fast, you know, which of course, if we're being super honest, like we all want to get faster. We want to be our best. Um, so I think sometimes just thinking about not even just like outcome performance and process goals, but even like short, medium and long-term goals. Like with my students, like when um, I used to have to write, I would write the objective for every lesson on the board. And it was like super specific. You talk about objectives like today, you know, we are going to talk about, um, we're going to look at this scene and our objective is to discuss man versus self conflict in this scene. And that is what we're going to do. And we're, you know, we're boiling it down to something really simple instead of just like understanding conflict or talking about conflict. And so the kids would see that when you come in. So, you know, I think, you know, when we're talking, that's a very short term performance goal, you know, objective Mm -hmm. that we're looking at. So I was thinking about, you know, I think we all, and you've talked about this in the past, that for specific workouts, you know, you have a very, very short term goal. I say it in my spin classes. What is your goal Mm -hmm. for today? What's your goal for this sprint? What's your goal for this song? What's your goal for this class? You know, just very, and for some people, it doesn't even have to be like, oh, I'm going to hit my heart rate zone or whatever. Sometimes like Mm -hmm. some people's goal, you're just like, my goal is just to forget about the crappy day I just had. And just let mm-hmm. it go. Or my goal is just to move my body today because it's been a rough week. And so sometimes goals don't have to be so based in metrics, even though, 
-hmm. you know, when we talk about the SMART goals, specific, measurable, you know, actionable, realistic, time-based, you know, specific, oh, it should be measurable. But like, sometimes it doesn't have to be, but, you know, going into, if we're talking in athletes, going into a, a, a workout or a session with just a little goal in mind and just something like, Sometimes for me in a swim workout, it's my goal is not to forget the swim workout, <laughs> you know, and just to, even if yeah. I have it written down, not to forget counting my laps, you know, it's just something so simple. Yeah. And like a lot of times when I go into workouts, um, I try to focus on the actual physical movement. So uh -huh. let's say I'm working on something in my swim stroke, like I want to be able to feel the gallop in my stroke. And so that yep. whole entire swim process is based on feeling that gallop. Uh, today I rode my bike and I was doing low cadence stuff. So my whole goal was to stay in my aero bars as much as possible during those intervals. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just something, something small and specific that can really fo focus you in on like that specific workout. And those little small things add up, you know, and um, that's where yeah. you get the outcomes. Yeah. I mean, the sh I mean, just keep, you know, the short term goals, other short term goals, I say it a lot in uh, in my classes. Uh, we do a lot with focus. You know, your goal mm -hmm. is just to focus for this three minutes because we're going to be just sitting and you know mm -hmm. going at this cadence. And when your mind wanders, you bring it back. And that is also those just a little short term goal that is going to help you when you leave the bike or in a race, learning mm -hmm. how to bring that focus back. So, you know, I think sometimes people don't like very short term goals because they think it has to be, oh God, I got to hit this swim pace because my coach mm -hmm. said on 30 seconds rest to try to keep this. And then when you don't hit that very short term goal, it can derail mm -hmm. your whole workout. Well, what, what I, what I uh, that just kind of clued into my head is, so I did a track workout last weekend or last week. And my coach gave me, you know, do X number on X time. And there's been workouts where I could not, not put, not do what he said, you know? Yeah. And so that's when you have to be able to be realistic and say, okay, I can't, I can't do a, a three minute 800 or whatever. So I'm going to focus on 305 or 310. Mm -hmm. um, and then just kind of like, you have to balance yourself in every workout and evaluate where you are. Um, a lot of the times my coach gives me swim times and I just can't do them. <laughs> and I try my hardest. And, you know, you got to look at, look at what's accumulative, like swimming. If, if you're tired from running or biking, it, it is, it hits you in the swim like so much. Um, and so every day you have to evaluate these goals and these objectives to basically, you know, transfer that over to the very next day because you, you're, because you're not going to be able to do everything that you're set out to do. You have to be able to maneuver them a little bit and, and be okay with that. That's yeah, the biggest thing. For sure. And I was thinking about, I mean, gosh, I could talk about short-term goals forever before we get into medium goals, but um, the other things, like even when you're biking outside, a lot of my short-term goals for biking, like just for the workout are sticking to my hydration and fueling plan on the bike and not getting mm. behind because in training, sometimes I have a habit of not be paying attention as much to eating and drinking, um, you know, as, as closely as I should. And so when I finish a long ride and I've successfully fueled and hydrated, I feel so much success. And I'll tell you what, I mean, mm -hmm. maybe I, my short-term goals for bike workouts are never speed-based because whatever Strava shows, it shows, but <laughs> I, I also am very conservative on the road. So I think, I think that if you create a short-term goal that might not be attainable because you hit traffic or traffic lights, if you're like, oh, I'm going to finish this ride at 17.5 miles an hour average, you know, and then that mm -hmm. just gets into your head and it can ruin the whole ride instead of just like, I'm going to spend three hours time on my bike outside and I'm just going to work on keeping it smooth and steady and powering when I can like super, just very specific, but without a metric that's going to derail you that and same thing mm -hmm. for the run my a lot of times my run goal is to and if my coach is listening he knows my run goal mm -hmm. is to stay 
in my aerobic zone and not go into my tempo zone when he gives me an aerobic run because I do like to creep up. And that is a lot of times my Mm -hmm. very short-term goal for that workout uh, that sometimes I hit and sometimes I don't. And I, and I think it takes, it it takes a really good coach. I mean, obviously that kind of evaluates what you're doing because some athletes really need those kind of targets. And so Mm -hmm. even for me, um, like I use a lot of smart trainer workouts. And so, you know, I have Mm -hmm. FTP thresholds and heart rates and that's what I do with my athletes. And it's a really good goal because, um, you, you have these, these targets to hit like, uh, 200 Mm -hmm. Watts for 10 minutes or, whatever. Um, and it almost empowers you. Like when my coach tells, like, like when I see on my plan, because I fully trust my coach, although sometimes I do question, I'm like, are you sure this is right? (laughs) (laughs) Um, and he puts a specific time or pace Mm -hmm. or wattage that's not based on heart rate because I do a lot of heart rate training and then get into more specifics. Um, it's really empowering because it's like, Oh, I can do that, you know, because he's not going to give me something yeah. that's extraneous. Like he's, he's mm-hmm. focused on what I can do and what he thinks I can do. And so to have those targets sometimes is really a positive for, for me. Like it just depends how you look at it. And a lot of the times I look at workouts as, um, a challenge, like I'm never, I mean, I shouldn't say never, but when, but let's say I get a certain pace that I have to try to sustain for some intervals or something. Um, Mm -hmm. and you know, I see it as a challenge. And then if I'm in the workout and I can't do it, there's sometimes I text my coach and maybe he'll respond or I have to evaluate myself as an athlete. Like, okay, well, you know, I slept really crappy last night and not hydrated or, you know, I just, I'm, I'm giving it my best. And that's kind of how I feel you have to go into a workout is like, if you can evaluate yourself and you feel like you're giving it what you can that day, I mean, that's, that's all you can ask for, you know? Um, so that's where you can't get stuck on specific targets. I mean, use them as a target. Like that's why they're called targets. Um, you're trying to strive for something, but sometimes you miss the target. And if you let that derail you, I mean, you're never going to get to a finish line. Um, oh, for sure. I mean, keep trying. Yeah. And that's part of goal setting is evaluating, you know, even in the short term goals, you know, right after a workout or even in the middle of a workout saying like, what is working, what's not working and why is it not working? And sometimes it's just like, it's just not working because it's just a crap day and that's totally Mm -hmm. fine. And then Mm -hmm. you just kind of let it go because as we both know, and most people listening know, training is just cumulative. It's consistency. It's not like, because, you know, um, you know, it's not like you're not going to finish your triathlon because you only did three tempo intervals instead of four that one day in January. But like, Mm -hmm. so it's all just cumulative. Mm -hmm. But what I do love about goals, because I maybe it's my personality that, as you know, like, I really like process. Yeah. Yes. I just like, I don't have to write it down, but I do like having something out there to reach for because a race is a goal. Obviously, Mm -hmm. you're training for the goal. Mm -hmm. The goal is to cross the finish line. Um, And so it does give you, you know, it gives you focus, motivated, most motivation and direction. Just like you were saying on the trainer rides, if you have these power numbers to hit, gosh, it sure focuses you when, if you're on Zwift or you're looking at your Garmin and you're in the green zone and then you drop Mm -hmm. and you're like, all right, I got to get back to Mm -hmm. that target, that goal. Right. Um, But, and I never, I mean, Maybe I should give myself a harder time, but if I can't hit the goal, I'm like, oh man, oh well, mainly because I know I tried, but you know, and anybody listening, any race on the calendar, that is where you move into like your medium goals. You know, you've got your Mm -hmm. short term and and we'll get to long term, but you've got your like your medium size goals, which maybe are a training block or, you know, a race that's coming up. And that is where you can set, you know something a little bigger. I mean, I think for all of us, including pros like you, sometimes with, I think everybody's number one goal in a race is to finish, is to have a safe race and finish it. Like, I think everybody goes into that with the same goal. But I also think we would be lying to ourselves if we didn't say for some races that we want to go out and do our best and I think it is okay to say, I would like to be in this percentage of my age group, 
you know, mm-hmm. if when mm-hmm. everything comes together. I mean, I know you get to the start line of some races and you're like, I have a goal to finish within this place or to get mm-hmm. first or to win it. And I think that I think that that's okay to set oh, some 100%. big goals. Mm-hmm. I think I think it's very motivating. Like, yeah. um, you know, I have Ironman World Championships in St. George in May, and my goal would, I mean, I would love to qualify for Kona in that race. And it's a right. lofty goal. However, mm-hmm. I don't see it outstretched by any means, but it's motivating me today <laughs> to get to that yeah. start line the best to, to, to my ability. And I think that's the thing about long-term goals and actual goals like I want to finish in a in this top percentage of my age group or or what have you. Use them as a, as a motivating factor. Like I like if you feel deep down inside that that's something you're capable of. I think we all know mm-hmm. kind of what we're capable of and maybe we don't know our limits, but we know where we want to push ourselves, you know? Like that's being right. honest with yourself. And you know, I want to push myself to the, to the ability to qualify for Kona. And so whatever that means on the race day, but so on race day, I let go of that goal. It's in the back of my mind. Cause that's ultimately right. what I want to do. Correct. But then that's where I have to focus on what I can control and specific things that are specific to me, like my targets, like maintaining a certain wattage up this hill or, or staying arrow downhill. Like working on things that I know that I have direct control over on that day. And, you know, the actual outcome of that is, is the work that you do accumulative up to that race day, you know, and that's when you get to celebrate and say, okay, I got to see what I got. And like, that's, that's all you got. So when I was going through Lyme and stuff, it really changed my mindset. And, and as crappy as Lyme is and how much I had to go back and reset. And I, you know, I'm still like, you know, it's an ongoing thing. It really taught me how to let go of outcome. And Mm -hmm. before then, I, you know, I, I, I look at myself as an athlete before and I'm just like, yeah, like I had all these things and I did pretty well and everything, but my mindset changed and mm-hmm. my favorite race and I always say it was 2018 in Kona it's like there's no way in hell I should have been top 10 but my <laughs> whole outcome of that race was based on things that I just let go of like you know I focused on a specific wattage I focused on my nutrition I focused on you know my affirmation words I let go of everything and I and it was like I look back at that and it was just a magical day for me. And, um, you know, I cherish that. And so now going forward, you know, I've had pretty crappy races or I've gone through Lyme again and, you know, it's, it's just tough, you know? Um, but that's what I try to strive for is that feeling I had in that race, no matter what the outcome is. And, um, having, you know, my ultimate goal of, of trying to get back to Kona again is, is a big outcome goal that I have no control over, but I know that, that's what's going to motivate me from now until race day. And so I need those goals as well. And I think that's where they come into play um, as a motivating factor. Yeah, you're right. And I think you hit the nail on the head there when, you know, you can have these goals, Mm -hmm. but when the race happens, if you only have that goal in mind, I have to be seventh or whatever, or I have to finish in under this time, or my, if, if my swim isn't, under this time, if you get out of the swim and your swim is five minutes above where you thought you'd be, and then it's like, Arr, you know, so mm-hmm. the, the key is to let it, to have it, but let it go when you're racing and just give, give yourself over to the day. And mm-hmm. I always think about, you know, I do have goals and I have big goals, but whatever I give to that day, I know I gave my all. Like, for example, mm-hmm. I've said it before, when I was in at St. George at that World Championships, and I actually didn't really have, I didn't have a big goal, like, oh, I want to be in this percentage of my age group. I just wanted to, like, actually finish really strong for me and have a strong race. And then that whole swim shit show happened. Uh, okay, explicit <laughs> rating, but, you know, and and the rain, and I had to readjust, and I didn't finish in, like, the time I thought. I could have, but I actually was like, that was an awesome race. I did everything Mm -hmm. I could and it didn't derail me. And 
especially I was also thinking about these big goals coming at first from a running background and a marathon background. It's Mm. kind of wild because when you're running a marathon, you need a time goal because that's how your coach sets your paces for, you know, Mm -hmm. this is your first three miles and don't go past that. And that's what, when everybody is like, oh, you're running Boston, uh, what time do you want to finish in? And which is fine. Mm -hmm. That's what marathoners Mm -hmm. talk about. What's your goal time? It's all, it's so metric based and you're constant, you're looking at, you know, I was looking at my paces, which I absolutely, I don't mind. I do not Mm -hmm. mind looking at my pace when I'm running a marathon, trying to keep it within that, also looking at heart rate. And then when you move to triathlon, a lot of it isn't pace-based. And so I almost feel like in triathlon, it's very taboo to say, I want to finish this course in under Mm -hmm. five hours or under 510. Because of course, you don't know what the weather is going to bring. The course could be hilly. But so in triathlon, people don't really talk about time goals. They talk about placement. Um, Mm -hmm. and, And it's kind of because I straddle both worlds. It's so wild to me. I don't mind running without a pace for triathlon. I just, you just kind of lock it in to heart rate mm-hmm. or like, this is what I can sustain for this 13.1 miles, whatever it is. Uh, but it's always interesting to me how straight runners are so time focused and triathlon is a little mm. different. Yeah, no, and I, I think that's a good, it is, you know, I still have time goals sometimes like, you know, those are my, I would love to run a um, marathon in an Ironman at a certain pace, but I mean, um, I, it's very open-ended in that sense. And yeah. it is, maybe it's the aspect of, I mean, I'm trying to think, cause I did track and, and stuff and it was mm-hmm. all based on time. You know, it's the nature of the day. I think like you're swimming, biking and running and there's so much variety within the sport itself that right. the concept of having specific times uh, is really hard because like terrains are different. Um, wind factors, a, a huge factor, especially because you're not on a track, you're not on a set course that's been like, you know, um, kind of like the Boston Marathon, like, like, it's pretty consistent, whereas a lot of Ironmans, you know, they change venues, they change courses, um, there's, there's just a lot of outside factors that come into play for time. And that's kind of why I let go of time um, as well, because it is something that you can't really control sometimes. Um, like a marathon in Kona versus a marathon, say in Barcelona, like uh, one is super flat. One's not so flat. Um, Like you can't really compare those, you know? Um, And I think that's kind of where you have to, you have to look at the courses and and see what works for you as well. Yeah. I think when I was running Boston, I mean, Boston is a notoriously hard course. So I Mm. knew the time I wanted to go for, I kind of factored in for those late hills and it was an October race. So it was a little more humid, all that stuff. I mean, of course, I missed my target by a mile because <laughs> miles 21 through 24 were just awful, but whatever. Um, but again, I still, I actually was not even upset that I missed my time goal. I was just like, well, I certainly did give it my all. But um, yeah, yeah, it's really funny because, oh gosh, if I'm being super honest, I always wanted to, I had this like vision of, we talk about no time goals in triathlon and my coach, if he's listening, is probably like, oh God, I wanted to break five <laughs> in a triathlon mm. and, you know, and I'm sorry, in a no, half it's Iron a good Man. goal. It's a really good It goal. is. And I, you know, and yeah. I still, I guess because the triathlon, I said the triathlon community is so like, don't set a time goal, just set like you just, you don't know who's going to show up. You don't know what the course is going to bring, but I was like, it would be really cool to break five in a half Ironman. Mm-hmm. Well, because I was close. It was like, if we talk about smart goals, you know, it was, it was realistic on the right course and the right day. Mm -hmm. And so in Maine, um, I actually don't keep track of my time when I'm racing. Like some people know kind of exactly where they are on the course. Like, oh, I've been racing for two hours and 24 minutes so far. Um, I mean, I know I kind of knew what I did in Maine in the swim. I kind of knew Mm -hmm. what I did on the bike and I was on the run. And I was really having a a beautiful race. Talk about letting everything go. I just was, it was just such a happy day. And the course was really awesome. I'm kind of bummed they changed it and are leaving Old Orchard (laughs) Beach. And I was running behind this guy at mile 10. 
this big guy and I, I was, I was so tired and I tucked in right behind him <laughs> and my little feet were like, because I have such a high little cadence and he turns around and he's like, are you following me? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Like we're not in the same age group. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and so, and he starts talking to me, he starts talking to me and we're getting close to the turn for the finish. And, um, and he starts saying, what's your time goal? He's asking me in the middle of this race. I can't talk to him. I was like, dude, I'm about to die. And I yeah. uh, can't talk. And he's like, I was like, I don't know what my time goal is. I told him that we're racing. He's like, we're yeah. pulling each other. And he's like, I think you're going to break five. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I really was like, I was like, okay. And then um, I was like, okay, whatever. And we turn. <laughs> and this is, I mean, I, he, he's not listening to this, so it doesn't matter. He, <laughs> you go by the, you go by T1, like the, the bike racks, but it's mm-hmm. still another quarter mile to the finish in Maine. And I knew mm-hmm. that he didn't mm-hmm. know that. So he saw the swim arch, like swim out or bike out. And he just took off <laughs> and he took off. Like it was the finish. And I was oh, like, no. Oh wow. Where's he <laughs> going? And then I, um, and then I caught up to him because he obviously burnt out. And he was like, I thought that was the finish. Anyway, so we wrote, ran it together and I finished just under five, which was really, really cool. And I cried. So, but the whole time, I think one of the reasons maybe I did that is because I wasn't even thinking about it. So mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. there and I didn't think about it and it was awesome, but it was not I was not racing with that in my mind. It never entered my mind until he told me. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I think sometimes when you have these super specific goals and they could be like your North Star goals, like getting to Kona Mm -hmm. or finishing under 12 hours in an Ironman or coming out in the swim under 130 or something, you know, they're big out there and you just have to kind of chip away at them and keep working. Cause I'm a bit, I think mm-hmm. like if it is an achievable goal, if it's realistic, I think that anybody can do it. Yeah. You know? I mean, you know, a lot of people want to lose weight, you know? Right. And so let's say you're not necessarily an athlete. Let's just say you're stand like, uh, an average person who, you know, works out a couple times a week, walks and wants to lose 10 pounds, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I personally believe that anyone can do that if they have that in their mindset, you know, it's, it's not out of the ordinary to get back to a normal weight. And so having that, that goal of, you know, I want to lose this 10 pounds that I don't necessarily need. Um, it's having that in your brain helps trigger you to make really good choices every day. And if you can focus on having that as like your North star choice, I don't know how to say it. Choice mechanism, I guess. Like, Mm -hmm. like for example, um, you know, again, I want to, I want to get to Kona. And so I'm using that as my, my big goal. And so all the little things I do every day, um, you know, are going to build on each other day after day after day after day. And that's when you can ultimately get to that goal. And the reason I bring up weight is because it is something that you have control over and, you know, you make these choices every day that can be really, really simple, like eating an apple versus a chocolate bar. Like that's, that's a huge mm-hmm. difference and it's super easy to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you don't necessarily always think about what your long-term goal is, ah, chocolate bar here, chocolate bar there. And then you end up having chocolate bars every day, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it, it does help to have those. And I think they're very, very powerful and very, very valuable. Um, and one thing that, that, that kind of aligns with is having a coach, like my coach gives me a weekly outline and I've tried coaching myself and it is just so hard. And I find that when I have a coach that puts out an outline, those are my goals for the week. Those Mm -hmm. are my goals for the day. And I love, I, I love the process of building fitness and seeing the gains. And I love having like goals that are every single day. And if I were to coach myself, it's so, it's just hard. I mean, I could, I, I just would drive myself nuts. <laughs> Be like, I could probably do more. I could do less. Da, da, da. But having, having someone who believes in you and can see that kind of 
uh, overall view of things and then giving you specific goals for every day. That's what sustains me in the sport as well is, is, is being able to achieve like each day and trying my best at each day that, um, you know, I have a goal of swim, bike, run today, or I have a goal of swim strength today. And, you know, sometimes it's as small as that, that will get you to your outcome is just having, you know, the focus every single day on, on things that you can achieve. And those small baby steps add, add up. We are going to take a short break from our sponsor, Inside Tracker. Hey everyone, this episode is sponsored by Inside Tracker, a company actually founded not too far from us in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Angela and I both use their blood testing and analysis to make sure our bodies are optimized for the training we are doing. Whether you run, ride, hike, or swim, you understand what it means to push harder, reach farther, and go the extra mile. This relentless drive runs in your blood. That's why Inside Tracker provides you with a personalized plan to build endurance, boost energy, and optimize your health for the long haul. Created by leading scientists in aging genetics and biometrics, Inside Tracker analyzes your blood, DNA, and fitness tracking data to identify where you're optimized and where you're not. You'll get a daily action plan with personalized guidance on the right exercise, nutrition, and supplementation for your body. And when you connect Inside Tracker with your Fitbit or Garmin, you'll also unlock real time recovery pro tips after you complete your workout. It's like having your own personal trainer and nutritionist in your pocket. For a limited time, you can get 20% off the entire Inside Tracker store. Just go to insidetracker.com forward slash I race like a girl. Yeah. And I mean, just going back to the nutrition, and I was thinking about there's a couple athletes that I coach. Um, who are trying to lose a little weight in a very safe manner, not losing their power and fitness and all that. And, you know, you think about the long-term goal of losing 10 pounds, and that is where you go short term. And like you were saying, like, just like a training plan, you have a daily plan. Mm -hmm. And this is why there are nutrition coaches. And this is why I hired um, Scott Tyndall of Get Fuelin because I didn't need to lose weight. I just needed to learn how to fuel my body mm-hmm. so I could do what I was going to do for a really big season. And he had a whole, at that point it was a spreadsheet, but it's a whole app that gives you a plan every day based on a lot of different metrics. And for some people that would be completely overwhelming and derailing. Once I got in the groove, it was pretty easy to just look at, but I needed to know, and it wasn't about, he does do it for weight loss um, mm-hmm. too, but I needed I was not fueling right, as we have talked about, for my workouts. Like I would have a big session the next day and I just I just wasn't eating right before, during, after. Um, mm. And so that helped me. Um, and it gave me a little bit of accountability because, you know, he would see, I would text him and be like, I never got that protein shake in. <laughs> like I just, I'm <laughs> under what I need to be at. And he would be like, you need to go make that right now. Like you need that. And just, Mm -hmm. you know, until, and this is, you know, why we said until it became second nature, you know, until it became a habit. And then I understood this is how I need to eat. Like, if I'm being honest, Amy, you have to eat more carbs (laughs) to fuel your body, to do the things you want to do, um, to be strong and hit that, sub five hour half Ironman, you know, that kind Mm -hmm. of thing. I mean, I started working Mm -hmm. with him a long time ago before that whole season. And so, um, it's also, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help for whatever goals you're setting, because I mean, Mm -hmm. we're coming at it from a training perspective and a lot of people listening do have coaches or maybe Mm -hmm. have a printed out coach training plan or whatever it is. But if your goal you know, is a weight loss journey or, you know, is something with mindset to reach out to somebody who can help you like a sports psychologist. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of people out there who are experts who can help you achieve those goals. And, you know, the other thing is, and I, I don't know if you have this problem, but sometimes I, it's hard to set a goal because sometimes I'm afraid to set big goals you know, or to say it out loud, mm. because fear, if you say fear it, of failure or fear of a success, that's all yes, a, fear of failure and fear of success, because yeah, and especially yeah. for you, I don't know if you felt it once you gain success, then you show up to a start line or something. And everybody's like, well, 
she's got, she's, you know, she's going to win. You know, you know, everybody's you know, watching you. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, I've been through ups and downs my entire career. And again, when I went through such a devastating thing like Lyme or my foot thing, you know, I remember I had such good, I, I had a great build up to, to some, some races. And then I, then, you know, shit hit the fan basically with, with uh, yeah. my health. And I was slowly building back and it was just really crushing mentally and it was hard physically. And my coach at the time was like, you need to go do this half, half Ironman. I was in no place (laughs) to be on that start line. Like I knew like there was just no way that I was even going to be in contention for like a top 20, you know, I was just like, this is ridiculous. Why am I here? But it was, it was it was one of the most powerful races I've been at because I had to literally put away any type of those thought processes or I wouldn't even have started. Like I was a mental mess before that race. I called Mm -hmm. like my coach at the time was my boyfriend. And I I mean, that was a whole thing, but I mean, I (laughs) called and I'm crying and I'm like, I don't know why I'm here. What, like, Mm -hmm. what are we doing? And he's like, just go out there. Like, why do you do this? You have fun. Like who cares? And it was, and it was hard, but mm-hmm. in the race, like it was just, it was so empowering to be able to go there and let go of all these like extraneous thought process. Like no one cares. <laughs> yeah. We <laughs> just talked about this. End, like, yes. Is it going to matter in five years? Like, like now that I'm older, I consider myself wiser, but I, I really just don't care what people think. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's what I love I mean, about I you. About- I love it. Well, I, well, I care about my circle. I I care about the people I love. I want to help them out, but it's like Joe Blow that lives, you know, 10 miles down the road and sees my results and makes a comment or I'm like, I don't like, it doesn't, I I just don't care. I just don't care. (laughs) And I I think it takes time and like experience to, to kind of figure that out and let that go. And, um, now I say all this and I'm going to be going into a race here in a couple of weeks. And you, you know, I, I, I would definitely have still some of that pressure, but it's, it's always a mental check and a mental reminder. Like, mm-hmm. um, no one, like in the end, it's you and it's you that is putting yourself on the start line. So, you know, mm-hmm. focus on that versus like this extraneous chatter. That's just really, it's not even real, you know, and if people are going to chat about you or talk about you, or you think they are, I mean, that is such a low blow. Like they're more concerned about themselves comparing themselves. And I just don't want to live that way. Yeah, no, Um, you're so right. We have to let go of fear and, you know, it's okay to say, to make these big goals and to say them out loud and to miss mm -hmm. and to just put yourself out there that, silly cliche quote the you miss 100% of the shots you don't take you know is 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 true and I think short-term goals are the easiest to set because it's right in front of you or just the easiest it's so Mm -hmm. like right there like I'm gonna cook a healthy dinner tonight or something like that like just something simple I'm gonna you know swim this 400 focusing on the the pull or whatever Mm -hmm. it is, you Mm -hmm. know, and even medium goals, I'm going to get to the, this race healthy. I'm Mm going to be strong, but like, I think it's, it's the long-term goals that where the fear comes in and you make these big things and you're just like, oh gosh, can I hit that North star goal? Um, but I think, but I think it's the way you, it's the way you look at it. Like, like if you had a goal of, of qualifying for Boston, that's, that's an awesome goal. And it's like, like, why not shoot, try for that? Like, if you feel in your heart that that's something you really want to do, shoot for that. I mean, you got your life. Like, like, like I want to get to Kona and like, that's a lofty goal. And I, I, but I, I feel like, you know, if I gave it my all and tried and if I made it awesome, if I don't, I know that I, I had that as my, as my North star. And, and that's, that's the whole point of doing all this for me is just like challenging myself to see what I got. And that's, that's where I want to go, you know? So I use that as a motivating factor. And I think if you can keep that mindset, um, it yeah. only and pro- to use the, propels you yeah, forward. And to use it to, yeah, use it to excite you. And, you know, yeah. because if you're excited and that's the other thing we didn't even talk about, but if you're excited about that goal, you know, or you, it matters to you, 
then it mm-hmm. becomes this awesome journey of doing that. Everybody, I think we even talked about this a long time ago. Like I had such a, there were all these races last year and they were coming fast and furious and they took a lot of focus and training and I trained hard. I recovered hard. And I think you were like, you know, how did you do that? And it was because all of these were big goals and they were all new and exciting. Mm. And mm-hmm. so it was like, it was easy to, to, to have those goals because I was like, it was so, so new. And mm-hmm. I was just so happy to be at the start line at Boston at, at the 70.3 worlds at my first Ironman. Um, and, and that's the thing, like, don't set the goal of like beating like, like this thousand yard time in the pool. <laughs> if you don't even care about it, <laughs> you know, like yeah. if you care about shaving five minutes, well, I guess that would be a lot. You can tell I'm not a pool swimmer. <laughs> if you care about <laughs> shaving two minutes off this, this swim time, and that's what you want to do, then that is awesome. That would probably not be an awesome goal for me because I no, would just frustrate either. out like 100%, 100%. But a run goal at Boston next year, mm-hmm. you know, even a time goal, because that's the way we runners are, that <laughs> is something that I would shoot for and get excited about. And so, mm-hmm. you know, if you're not excited about, you know, if we talk about nutrition, if you don't care about those like five or 10 pounds, which, you know, it doesn't matter. Don't set that goal and don't get fall into the trap of like setting a goal because somebody else is doing it, you know, like Mm -hmm. carve Mm -hmm. your own path. Like not everybody wants to, and I'm not saying this, you absolutely should get to Kona and will get to Kona, but not everybody sets a goal of getting to Kona, like, because that's a really lofty goal. And, and I mean, I I assume if you're only doing triathlon to get to Kona, then we maybe need to rethink about your goals. But, um, you know, I think if the goal whether it's big or small excites you, then you know that you are on the right path and to just be fearless Mm -hmm. about it. And I think lastly, one thing just to touch on, like, because, you know, what if I don't make Kona? I mean, I'll be sad, definitely, but I know that I've tried my best. And yeah, one of the things that I've learned and, and you always, you actually have a great quote for it. Um, race with gratitude or what do you say? Oh, the attitude of gratitude. Attitude of gratitude. Gratitude is such a powerful, powerful feeling. Mm -hmm. And I find that like, if like when I start on a start line and I know that I'm healthy, I'm so grateful for what I've been able to achieve. I'm so grateful for the people around me and my support crew. And, you know, even our team, I race like a girl and girls get gritty. I'm just so grateful that like people can empower each other and they found friendships and like that, that pushes me forward. And I, I just think we need to emphasize how powerful, even within a context of training or in a race, like what gratitude can do in the moment. Like every time I've thought about how grateful I am uh, uh, or thinking about someone that helped me get to to the race or wherever, um, it just empowers me and it, it, it makes me strong because I want to do good for them because they've, they've been there for me. And, and, you know, and it's, I don't know, it's, it's one of the most powerful things that I've ever felt in a race is having that gratitude for life, for health, for people, for, you know, all sorts of things. I mean, it, Oh yeah. Just massive. I cried I cried on the start line of my first marathon because I was so (laughs) grateful to be there. I mean, but I cry a lot before and after races, not during. Good. I like crying. (laughs) Yeah. 100%. You know, you know, you know, it's funny. I had a coach once, uh, and it was a while ago, many, many years ago. Uh, I won my first 70.3 as a pro and I cried at the finish line. Mm-hmm. And I was so happy because I, you know, I broke this barrier that I really wanted to do. And later that day, he said to me, why did you cry? Like, <laughs> like he just felt it was such a negative thing. And I, it just shook uh-huh. me. Like, I'm just like, this is how like powerful this is to me. You know, like, I'm just so grateful and like, just, you know, happy. And, and, and so you have to embrace like the highs and lows and you know, I was a big high oh, and yeah. makes you cry. But I mean, like you go through so many things that it's just, that's what I love sport about. Like you, you, you're not this like mediocre thing. You like, you have to embrace the highs, the lows, the excitement, the, 
and just enjoy it. Yeah. So your, to wrap it up, your North Star goal this year, your big goal is to make it to Kona, which you will. For a triathlon, yep. That. And then for also uh, stay up right on my bike for my Grand Prix. <laughs> I love it. That is And a just big do well. Goal, I mean, you know, I, I think one of my biggest goals this year, if I had to say it, is just challenge myself to the to the possibility of what if. And I know that sounds so so like open ended, but part of it is, no, you know, I love it. getting to championship races, um, doing well in what I've signed up for. Um, you know, I have some some very set races that I'm gonna go do and you know, I, I, I'm going into a new thing. Like I've never mountain bike raced before, but I'm going to go do Leadville. Like <laughs> this is a whole new challenge. But if I go into the mindset of, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to give it a hundred percent. And that's, that's the ultimate. And that's kind of what I, I would do with any race now um, from here forward. I mean, and, and, you know, ultimately I love Kona. I, I love Hawaii. I love the race, the venue, and that's why I want to get there. You know, it's not because it, it's going to give me some type of special thing. It's just I want to get there because it's an experience that I've absolutely loved in the past, and I want to experience it again. So that is simple as that. Awesome. <laughs> simple and what about you? That. Let's go. What's your goals? Because uh, um, you've been through my, ups and downs. And we can, I've like, been through ups and downs. Yeah. I know what it is like to miss goals because you're injured. Um, my very short term goal is to take care of my foot every day. So the bone heals, um, my medium goal would be to hopefully get to do a race this summer. My foot heals, but my long term, my North star goal, my long term goals are to run Boston in 325 next year to, Mm -hmm. uh, finish, uh, Honestly, if I'm being honest, because this is this is real and this is me, to finish uh, top ten and by Barcel in my age group for Barcelona Ironman, nice. and uh, yeah, I know that's a big goal considering I can't even run right now. But that's not till October. Yeah, but we. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, time, time. I have yeah. time. It's true. You have time. Uh, yeah, and to stay upright at Rue de Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, I have, I think right now, and I think, you know, to wrap up, sometimes it's hard to make some long-term goals when you're just struggling every day to have some short-term goals. Mm -hmm. Um, So um, I'm not trying to, shall we say, put the cart before the horse uh, Mm -hmm. and just to really stick short-term and, you know, say my very short-term goals are be able to get back on my bike and cycle without pain um, Mm -hmm. and stay positive about my injury and uh, not really go super long term yet until I know that I'm healthy enough to start training, which is fine mm-hmm. because that's where everybody's goals are different, and I'll get there too. And I'll just uh, I'll just be there to support you at Ironman Worlds uh, and latch on to your goal. Awesome, <laughs> I love it, and then yeah. we all get to celebrate. <laughs> we all get to celebrate together. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Uh, follow us at I Race Like a Girl. Send us a message um, and go set some goals. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening, and we hoped you enjoyed it. You can find us at amywoodsfitness.com and angelanath.com. We'd love to hear from you.